Hey y'all, Sherry G, and I'm back with a real quick video. I plugged a piece of the episode from Love and Marriage Huntsville last night, episode 10 of this season, season 6A. And um, the piece that I plugged out was where Melody is sitting with her lawyer, her attorney, and they're discussing <clears throat> the custody case because it was still ongoing at that particular time. And so I do have some comments that I'd like to make about that. And I also want to comment on the recent updates. Before I do that, I'm going to pause and let you listen to the little outtake of that particular scene. And then I'll be back with my comments. See. Yes, let me tell you something. One thing for sure that I see is you've been busy. <laughs> Caleb has been my attorney since this whole messy divorce, to be honest. And now he's stepping in and helping me with this prolonged custody case. He's really trying to get everything resolved. So really, you know, my kids and I, we can just move on with some normalcy without all of the extra. But I have no doubt that Caleb will take care of it and get it all handled. How have you been? I've been great. Um, and I appreciate you too, taking some time to oh, of course. chat with me. Of course. So um, I know that we talked about my name change. So that's a big thing, a decision I made, right? Mm -hmm is that I want to change my name from Holt, like remove Holt, when it comes to my biz, Melody Sharif. I want to go back to my maiden name. You know, Rogers is, yep. you know, the name that I did everything up till 22 and, and I've got my that success. With a D, right? With a D. Mm -hmm. That's right. So where are we with that? And how long does it take and all that good and, stuff? And I'm glad you mentioned, you know, it is kind of a tough decision. There's not really anybody that can object to okay. you getting your name changed. Okay. One of the things I think that is hold, that's gonna hold you back is, that, is there is a requirement that you cannot be a party in any active court case in any jurisdiction in the United States of the world. So we're involved in a, in a court case with Martel. So, um... Child, so you mean to tell me Martel, <laughs> this is not what, well, this is not it. I'm not happy about that. I'm sure you're not. So, unfortunately. I know I was surprised even some of the things in that case, you know, being asked. I mean, I didn't, you know, this is my first time dealing with a custody sure. thing. So I was like, why does it phone records? Like, I felt like that was invasive. Why do you need, why is your attorney asking for my phone records? I understand a little bit, I guess, bank statements because you want to prove that the person is able to take care of the children. You know, we objected to a decent amount of stuff. Yeah, um, because one of the questions they wanted to know the, that he had his attorney ask to your, my to passwords to, to my social, social media. media. Never had a judge once force my client to turn over their password. Up with since the divorce in a romantic way. Why does that matter? That doesn't it, matter. It doesn't. How are the things going, though, with you and Martel? You know, I know you've had to send him a letter and stuff in the past for him popping up at the house and all the yep. excessive calls and all of that. That part has calmed down. Okay. Well, that's... So I, that makes me very happy. That's good. <laughs> I guess, unfortunately, um, we'll have to wait until the case is over. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, y'all. So can I be honest? Well, I'm going to. When I initially heard all of the hoopla of the things that Martel's attorney was requesting for Melody, like, you know, um, the financial statements, which makes sense, um, the passwords to her social media, um, to know who she was with romantically and things like that, I kind of thought, well, maybe that might be an exaggeration because how in the world could you request those things? Like, that's real controlling. Like, she wouldn't even have a life, would she? So it's good to know that those things were indeed asked for um, by his attorney because, of course, that's what Martel requested. And to me, that just even more highlights how diabolical this man is and how demented his mind is and how much he really wants to control her although they're divorced like it's crazy to me but I'm so glad that she did not have to outside of the financial records give up that information can you imagine but anyway that even that even makes um, to me it makes the release of his name and taking on her maiden name even more of a celebratory event because she's shedding more of him, 
more of the person who's preventing her from moving forward and becoming the woman that she wants to be. So I'm extremely happy for her. I'm glad that she shared this um, p- particular segment in this episode so that it welcomes us more into what it is that she's going through. Now, when I heard her say, you know, Martel, that's just Martel trying to control me. Uh, I was a little off put with that, <laughs> with her saying that, honestly, because it's not Martel um, controlling her as much as this is set up by the courts. This is just the way it is. And I feel that she probably said that, you know, it was an emotional response to the situation because she did allude to the fact in a post that she was really upset when she sat with her lawyer, with her attorney, and he explained this to her because this was something she was really looking forward to. So I could see her kind of like having that type of an emotional response. Um, And in a way, it it would be a sort of control, but it's just the way the court system is set up. Because if you have pending court cases out there, you can't just change your name until those things are resolved. That makes sense. But now that her name is changed, she can pursue other things. And when I say other things, I'm thinking about hmm, the next court case. Is she going to go forward with the next thing? And all of that remains to be seen. So here is what Melody is going to be doing on June 17th is actually she is going to celebrate. You know, we've heard of divorce parties, but she's having a name change party. I love the idea. I'm happy for her to be able to celebrate that because like I said, in hindsight and looking at everything that she's going through, she definitely has a lot to celebrate. It's going to be a private event that she's holding on June 17th. So here's a look at the invitation. I think it's really, really pretty. And then Melody actually made a post um, explaining some of the situation, what we were going to see in this episode, and some of the things that transpired. So she says, all new episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville tonight. Don't miss it. I'll have to catch up later, but y'all know I'm always about telling my story and through that encouraging someone else as the lessons are pulled from the story. One, always follow your intuition. I remember doing the divorce, deciding to keep my name as is because I have four babies with that last name. So I didn't want them wondering why my name was different from theirs or why we didn't match up, so to speak. But one day I was in my kitchen and it felt clear as day in my spirit. Change your last name. I remember calling my manager immediately and saying what I felt and my decision. Because she knows I'm intuitive, she didn't question it and simply said, well then, that's it. Change it. Two, divine timing is perfect. I wasn't happy when my attorney shared the info in tonight's episode and I felt like something I had gotten excited about quickly came to a halt. I remember leaving this scene upset and even crying as I drove home and I was done working because I felt like, dang, another hurdle, another prevention. But when I say now I understand the lesson on patience and divine timing, my God, it's even more perfect now because I literally have evolved so much more this last year. So much has ended in order to birth new things. So God, I thank you. Perfect timing for my name change. Three, delayed truly doesn't mean denied. And because of the delay, I get to celebrate my new beginnings at the perfect time, the perfect way. So I'm so glad that she expounded on that. I just wonder what makes this the perfect time? I love the way she's celebrating it. I think that's perfect. If that's how she wants to celebrate it, then I'm all for her. But I just wonder what makes this the perfect time? So I feel like there's more to come. Now, I'm excited for her. And for all of us who have stood behind her um, all this time because, you know, of all of what she was going through, we can all celebrate with her. Although this celebration on June 17th is private and we can't be there, we can still celebrate in our own way that she gets to shed more of the things and stuff that was holding her back. But when I think of the request that Martel was making, the request, you know, into her to have her social media 
passwords and the request to know who she was dating financially. That to me even highlights more of his mindset. It highlights even more to me how how diabolical he really, really is, how demented he really, really is, and how much he really wanted to control her. Now, Martel, um, there's a there's an outlet that is called O M G Reality TV, and they posted like the video clip of this particular scene, and then um, it's actually O M F G O M F G Reality TV that posted this little video clip. But Martel actually he he took liberty to responding to um all of the comments that people were making and what he said here is "Welp, court is over. Hello, Ms. Rogers with an explanation mark. A lot of you women just love leaving irrational comments. Clearly this has nothing to do with me trying to control her nor the situation. Stop running with everything. I have a feeling somebody else typed this for him. I don't know why, <laughs> but anyway, be that as it may, whatever it is, here's what I feel. Like I said, I don't feel like he was necessarily controlling the situation or he used the situation, the custody case to kind of control her as far as her name, because I don't think he thought that that much out of, you know, how it would affect her beyond the fact that, um, beyond the fact that, you know, um, she would be moved by the, by him, you know, trying to, um, get full custody of the children and that she might move in other ways to do things that he wanted her to do. I don't think he thought about the name change aspect of it all. I just think it's the legalities and I don't think he's smart enough to understand the legalities um, of it. And so I just think that that was just her attorney letting her know what the legalities were. And coincidentally, it just happened to be that she couldn't change her name. Now, I do believe that he was elated to find out that she couldn't change her name. I do believe that because on the reunion of season five, at the reunion of season five, he was adamant in letting Carlos know that she wasn't Melody Cherie or she wasn't Melody Rogers, that she was indeed still Melody Holt. So he did. He made a big deal out of that. So I do believe that he is bitter about this right now. And yeah, some of the comments were probably irrational. I didn't even go and look it through all the comments. But at the same time, I do believe he's bitter about it. But we're all happy about it. So anyway, please share your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so the next time I drop a video, you get a notification. Until next time, ciao.